expected through Saturday with southeasterly winds around 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. But then Sunday, cooling back off to around 19 to 20 degrees with a good chance of some light rain. And Monday, looking to be a bit cool as well. I'm Global News Weather Specialist Phil Darlington. Your news starts now. 215 active cases of COVID-19 are in the Edmonton area. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Raya Lahu. According to the province's website, three more people have died from the virus over the past day. All of the deaths were in the Edmonton area, resulting from the outbreak at the Misericordia Hospital. Now, the outbreak has resulted in now six deaths to date. 46 people with the virus are in hospital right now, with seven of them in the intensive care unit. Now, 37 new cases were identified over the past day, with 584 total active cases in the province. Well, could masks become mandatory? It's looking unlikely here in Edmonton as Mayor John Iveson is worried about inconsistencies in rules within the metro Edmonton area. But President Naki Ellis says she supports masks being mandatory. I think it would be a good thing. I think that a lot of um, people my age also just want to be outside and I feel like it would be okay just to wear one if you get to be outside and get to do things. Toronto has made face masks mandatory in all indoor spaces. The president of the Canadian Medical Association doesn't think COVID-19 can be eliminated without a vaccine, but it can be controlled. The CMA's Dr. Sandy Buckman says we may have to change our thinking about the pandemic. And rather than getting a big spike in wave, like worrying about the first wave and overwhelming our healthcare system and seeing many people die from this disease, I think we can control it and we can get like little bumps, almost like moguls on a ski hill. And we have to ski through those moguls and find our way so schools can remain open, the business this is coming open, the economy can get going again because the consequences of not doing that are great as well. He says it's going to take all of us following pandemic measures long term, which itself will be a challenge. The CMA says that contact tracing and protecting vulnerable populations is also critical. The UCT government has quietly cut two student grants, including one designed to help students with dependents. The Alberta Maintenance Grant has been rolled into a new grant, but Chair of the Council of Alberta University Students and the VP of the University of Alberta Student Union, Rowan Lee, says it doesn't measure up. If they're a university student, they're not eligible for any provincial funding anymore to help them deal with those financial burdens. And if they're a college or polytechnic student, then they're only eligible for half as much money. So if you're a student who uh, needs to put your children in daycare, for example, which is very expensive, the new amount of money available to you, which is $1,500 a semester, is nowhere near enough to help. He says the cuts are especially devastating at a time when tuition is expected to rise over the next two years and during an economic downturn when people with dependents might consider going back to school in order to shift careers. The Conservative Party is calling for Parliament to be, quote, immediately recalled for all documents related to a now-cancelled federal contract with We Charity be made public. As Global's David Aiken reports, it's following news that two of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's relatives have collectively received hundreds of thousands of dollars in speaking fees from the We organization. Now we're learning that Justin Trudeau's mother received tens of thousands of dollars in speaking fees from the We organization, and Justin Trudeau's brother, Alexander, also received received several thousand dollars in speaking fees for the organization. A few weeks ago, the federal government was looking to find somebody who could run a $900 million program that would match up Canadian students with volunteer organizations, and it would send that money out to those students for doing some work uh, in the charitable sector. When it came time to figure out who was going to do that, the Trudeau government gave that contract to the WE organization to hand out $900 million. WE was going to keep about $20 million for its work through the contract. This contract was sole source, and as we learned yesterday from the Prime Minister himself, he did not recuse himself when discussion came up at Cabinet to award this contract. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa. The town of Banff and surrounding areas are under a wolf warning after multiple sightings. Parks Canada staff euthanized an emaciated wolf earlier this week. Wildlife biologist Sarah Al McGee says that we're visitors in the home of these wild animals and we need to remember that. Managing our waste and what we call attractants, which is basically anything that we have that might be smelly and attract animals to check you out. Uh, managing those attractants is critical. So that means keeping a really clean camp, making sure that you don't ever leave food unattended, 
but it also means appropriately disposing of waste. She recommends people check for such animal warnings before heading out. Well, some vehicle owners in the Chappelle neighborhood are having to deal with racist symbolism and words someone spray-painted on their property overnight. Carla Vasquez Oteza woke up to see swastikas and slurs that had been plastered on hers and other vehicles. Now they have to find a way to clean it up. I'm really upset because our vehicle has a swastika on it, and uh, how are we supposed to drive around with that on our vehicle? It's disgusting. She said she did notify police about it. Now, earlier this week, EPS reported that they were investigating a vandalism spree in the Forest Heights area where 18 vehicles had been damaged along with an apartment building. Now there's no word on if the incidents are connected. Well, the city has a warning for Edmontonians who are setting off fireworks. Well, you just need a permit. And that hasn't been happening since city council reopened the process in late June. It's led to a lot of confusion with people hearing what they think are gunshots and they're calling 911. Now, it's happened 47 times in less than two weeks. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, the fireworks are not allowed on public land in places like parks or schoolyards. And anyone wanting to shoot off fireworks on private land must go through the application process. This is Global News Radio 880 Edmonton. I'm Rhea LaHue. Motorcycles are back on the roads, and there are new rules we all have to follow. Due to COVID-19 regulations, all riders are advised to be no closer than two meters from each other when not riding or when stopped. Passengers on the back of bikes must be from the same household. Large off-bike gatherings are not advised and limited to 15 people. This is now the law, with hefty fines for violation. Watch for bottles, gravel on the roads, and those tricky left-hand turns. This message from the Alberta Motorcycle Safety Society. Independent Jewelers is bigger and better with our new online superstore. Our inventory changes daily with fantastic deals just for you. And don't forget about the free shipping and online financing. We also offer curbside pickup Monday to Saturday. Not only that, but Independent Jewelers will be donating 5% of all of our online sales to the media.